Okay, yep, yeah, I'll give a quick introduction. Hi, my name's Craig Simmons. I was a councillor initially on Oxford County Council, Oxfordshire County Council, then Oxford City Council for a total of more than 20 years. Uh, and I stood down a couple of years ago. Um, so I was sort of, um, was Lord Mayor of Oxford 2019 to 2020 during sort of the latter part during COVID. I'd also been Sheriff and Deputy Lord Mayor um, on the on the council, I sort of was leader of Green Group for some years, um, and also uh, chair of the finance committee um, for a, a couple of years, and also chaired um, for three years actually, and also chaired scrutiny committee on city council for a couple of years. So I had quite a lot of experience of different parts of the of the council, and also you know what it was like twenty plus years ago. Uh, when, when most Greens were just laughed at. Uh, at least Benjamin, I was a city councillor for 15 years in, in East Oxford, uh, former Lord Mayor. I chaired numerous committees. So I chaired the local area committee before Labour abolished it, uh, chair of planning committee, the old employment and economic development committee. Um, I think I was vice chair of leisure committee at one point. Um, yeah, so I've, I've, I've Although I haven't been on the council for six years, I've been um, following the, the elections of our current councillors and um, sort of being there in case they need me. So I've, I've kept my hand in a bit. I was also chair of the National Association of Green Councillors from 2016 to 2019. I'm now currently a candidate for, um, joint candidate for international coordinator on the National Party's executive. No, that's funny. I feel still like a new councillor, but I'm an older one now because we've got lots more, which is really exciting. Um, hello. Yes. Yeah, so Sam Casey Rare. I'm councillor in South Oxfordshire um, for a ward, Sanford and the Rhythms. Um, That's the ward that borders Oxford City at Grenoble Road and um, the Vale of the White Horse at sort of the Abingdon area. Cullum Science Centre is in the ward as well, so where the fusion plant is, do a lot of um, negotiating with them. Um, I'm the chair of the Climate and Ecology Committee at South Oxford. Uh, South Oxford, I'm the cycle champion. Um, I'm on the plan committee and I'm on the, what's called the schools organisation and strategic group at the moment. Kevin Middleton, I'm, uh, I'm currently chair of um, Stamford and the Vale Parish Council and um, I've been a parish councillor for uh, um, I think now, um, four years, something like that, I think. I'm Andrew Prosser. I'm a town councillor, Whitney Town Councillor for Whitney North uh, since three years. So I still feel fairly new. And uh, since just over one year, um, district councillor uh, on West Oxfordshire District Council. And uh, since May this year, also, um, as we entered an alliance with Labour and uh, Liberal Democrats and uh, thankfully pushed out the Conservatives, um, also cabinet member for climate change. Uh, so I am Chris. I was elected as a city councillor um, in May last year. So in 2021, um, having not been a councillor as long as uh, many others, don't have many long lists of fancy uh, titles and things that I've chaired, but I'm currently the group leader um, of the city um, green group. And um, yeah, currently sitting on scrutiny committee and uh, the finance uh, scrutiny panel um yeah i'm rosie i have been a, i'm a city councillor in oxford also with chris and i've been elected for i've been in this role for a whole three months as only elected last may um and uh, i'm a yeah city councillor for donnington ward um and we'll probably have less to say than the others but really glad to join you cheers uh i'm david newman and i since uh May this year, I've been a parish councillor in Blackbird Lees, which is a bit of Oxford. Not all parish councils are in rural areas. Just before we split up into breakout groups, perhaps some of you have been here a bit of a, a bit longer, can say a bit about what you've managed to achieve in the time. As I was saying earlier, I'm the chair of the Climate Committee, so I'm very pleased to say in the last year since we did this before 
we've launched our climate action plan for South Oxfordshire. It was um, it's a bit later than we wanted to do it. Obviously, we've been in joint power with Dens in South Oxfordshire since 2019, so it got a bit hammered um, in terms of time by by COVID and officers being, you know, having you know not having the bandwidth to do this. But actually, the one we've brought out now, I'm really proud of, I'm really pleased with because it's a really properly costed, budgeted, it's a really really plan that's gone through um, all the senior officers' uh, checks that they actually feel that it's part of what they can do and we've gone through and had a you know a great negotiation and it divided into seven seven parts. So there's a, there's a, you know, there's like seventy something actions on that. And in our next meeting in October we'll be um you know, our first report on um delivery against that plan so as a committee so i'm really really pleased about that um i'm also what else am i doing i've been working um with the councillors uh both in south and vale uh branch the branch party and with other councillors in south oxfordshire on a, a position on solar farms and renewable energy but particularly on solar farms uh because in my ward which most of it's in the green belt um we've had two Really, and we need we need to develop a, a, a council from a planning point of view, but also from the local Green Party because there's um you know there it, it's in general it's something we absolutely support, but we have to think about cumulative impact, um, farmland that sort of stuff. And I've also been working with the officers very closely and getting some um some discussion with the officers who's looking at this the solar farm applications um so so that's taken up quite a lot of my time um and the other big thing that's going on in my ward um is the planned county council uh road that's coming from Didcot across to uh across the thames to uh clifton hamden you know it's got the vhi so the housing infrastructure fund one road though working with residents with parish councillors with councillors um really to put quite a lot of pressure on the county council on that road and making sure that uh you know that the planning application that's in is is critiqued we've, we've engaged some consultants and some experts including professor white who's um very well known what to do with welsh government and a green party person um pressing for review of this infrastructure making some suggestions. We've, we've got a nice press release and um, article in the Oxford Mail about um, maybe alternatives such as with Robin Bennett, alternatives, maybe trams, light rail, that sort of stuff. So bringing, raising the profile of maybe a road isn't actually what we need around here. Um, and then on the other hand, because you always have to do this, I think as a councillor working against something, but also putting alternatives. So if this is going ahead, um, what else do we need to mitigate any impacts they're looking at maybe closing some older bridges changing some of the routes um changing the way that you know the bridges look etc so that's taking up quite a lot of my time i think there's um quite a lot to go on that there's a planning application coming forward in october but um i think it will be well so sorry september i think it will be uh, postponed um and the other thing i've been doing um is as a cycle champion i've been working with the development of a local cycling and walking plan for Abingdon. So in the Vale of the White also not in my castle, but obviously because it's you know, butts up against it and impacts Hallam um, and so the air along with them in particular. Um, and the sort of the science of course science cycling network that has been working in loop with officers and other councillors, local councillors to really uh, Get the best, the, the best and the most sort of effective with the local knowledge uh, for that plan. And they'll be working on the top one that's just got something. So, it's really important, I think, to get you know, green influence on those uh, plans to make sure that they're the best they could be. Um, I did look actually at the last video you put through, David, and I realized that I waffled off with you, so I'm just stop. That one. <laughs> Let's have a word. I suppose the first thing to say um, on on the town council, which is longer, um, three years. Um, I, I I've been the only green councillor with with a, a Labour majority. So, um, unlike Oxford, 
working very closely with with um, Labour on 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 the council, and the the Conservatives were the ones that we we pushed out there. So the the biggest thing I think is um, coming into that, and uh, also working through the um, as vice chair of the planning committee is is um, uh, promoting active active travel, um, e even though that was outside the remit of the town council. Certainly pushing every uh, for better um, cycle and walking infrastructure and every planning application that's come through um, putting a, um, <clears throat> sort of requirements for um, um, better um, better sort of um, nature-based um, uh, sort of solutions in those those plans so so trying to move away from tarmacking everything over um, and uh, putting in place um, cycling infrastructure um, so that's that's probably been the main area on on um, on housing um, we've we've had two very big housing developments plans um, um, uh, around Whitney, but not started. One one of those is in a completely unsustainable place, and uh, I think I played my part in in putting the brakes on that. It, it's not over yet. Uh, the planning system is not easy to um, to to change. Um, on the district council, I think the the main thing because uh, I've only been a district council for a year was was probably laying the groundwork um, to um, to get enough councillors. Um, and uh, cooperation going to, to to push out the conservatives. So um, there, there's lots to lots to come there. We we're only new, um, but we're we're planning to accelerate work on 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 climate change. Of course, that's the main priority. Uh, it's an interesting question. I think just just to give some context. So uh, folks who don't know, um, mm -hmm. until May uh, this year, there were only three Greens on the City Council, and the year before that, there were only two. Um, we're now up to six, and that has made a huge and transformative difference in terms of the things that we're able to achieve and I would say that in the last two months we've achieved uh, in terms of tangible um, kind of commitments and uh, policy changes and so on at a city council level we've achieved as much in the last two months I would say than we did in the previous year simply by virtue of having more bodies in the room more seats on committees more influence so um most of the things that i'm going to talk about have been in the last two months uh, which is really exciting because it means that we're our influence and our strength is growing but it also um i guess indicates how how really important it is that we not only get those first and second and third councillors but that we continue to grow the size of green groups and um, all the work that people put into getting greens elected is so important um so i'm going to i'm going to talk in sort of reverse chronological order because um, uh, some of you may have seen over the last week that we had a full council meeting on the 18th of July um, and a motion that Rosie and Lucy, Lucy who's not on this call, um, uh, put to Oxford City Council was passed, which will see um, the City Council introduce free period products in uh, public toilets, community centres, and um, other buildings the city council owns across the city, which is totally transformative as a policy. We think we're the second um, council in the country after Surrey to do a scheme like this, um, which will have a real tangible impact and difference for people experiencing period poverty, but also um, other people as well. Um, that's been we've had huge amount of press coverage and interest as a result of that. Rosie never stops being quoted in um, the Oxford Mail, Oxfordshire Live, writing in the Independent, elsewhere about that policy, which we think is not only going to have an impact in Oxford, um, but also across the country as well, because it's a a, a, a policy that, that has inspired um, other interests. I can see in a question there's a chat specifically about whether they are sustainable period products. Yes, specifically within the motion, um, there was a, uh, a clause in there to look specifically at providing sustainable and plastic free alternative period products as well. Um, because I haven't got much time, I'll, I'll move on from that. And another big win that we've had very, very recently is um, on scrutiny committee, myself and Lucy um, were able to get through a commitment to set up a, a new scrutiny panel, specifically looking at and, um, and assessing the council's policies, practices, and um, so on when it comes to climate and the environment. Um, so moving forward, there will be a dedicated body within the council made up of cross-party councillors looking at examining, strengthening uh, the council's policies on climate and the environment. 
um, which is a huge step forward because it means there's now going to be that dedicated space and scrutiny on those policies. I know a lot of other councils already have that, but Craig will, I, I'm no doubt, tell you that he previously tried to get that through. Um, and so it's been a long, long standing battle um, in Oxford. Another um, area that we've managed to get um, secure change on very recently is um, I know that many people on this call have been aware of the Oxford economic strategy, which the council has been consulting on over a number of uh, months. Um, we um, obviously, as Oxfordshire Green Party, submitted a response to that, which was very highly critical of some of the um, areas in that strategy, particularly um, the strand uh, within that strategy around being a global city. Um, but um, essentially, when that comes, to, when that came back from consultation with the City Council, it was a foregone conclusion that it was going to be adopted by the Cabinet. The question was, what concessions and small changes and tweaks could we get in that? And one of the big things that we managed to uh, back Labour into a corner on was getting trade union and third sector representation on the steering group that will be overseeing that strategy, um, which means that as that um, as that document and that strategy becomes live and it's being monitored and implemented, the people that are steering it are not just the businesses um, and the representative of business, which is what Labour had tried to put solely on that oversight board, but also trade unions and the third sector and civil society. And that's really, really important. Um, a few final bits and pieces <clears throat> to talk about is um, small things we've managed to get through, like um, individual tweaks to particular policies. So we've managed to get a commitment from the council to phase out gas in that asset management strategy um, and a whole bunch of other stuff around those things. And then last year, I guess the big two uh, wins we had was firstly the policy that we got passed um, to make Oxford City Council trans inclusive. That policy is now becoming starting to be implemented properly now um, with um, councillors and officers later this year receiving proper training for the first time on how to work with and support uh, LGBT and trans residents and the issues that they face and the barriers they face accessing things like accessing things like healthcare and housing and so on. But also some of the more um, I guess uh, tangible things coming in that we've uh, just had confirmed that two new buildings in East Oxford that are being redeveloped um, will have gender neutral toilets in. Um, so the East Oxford Community Centre and the business unit on K Street in East Oxford, um, which is which is really, really exciting. Um, and the final thing I guess to mention is that at the start of um, the last municipal year, so 2021, 2022, um, we, we um, uh, were part of and supported the cross-party work to make Oxford City Council the first council in the country to explicitly um, prohibit DSS discrimination in Oxford. So DSS discrimination is essentially um, in private renting of housing, landlords and letting agents advertising their properties and specifically prohibit, uh, specifically refusing to let to people who are on universal credit or legacy benefits such as housing benefit. Um, that's been illegal for over a year, but there's been very, very little action being taken on it. So now as a result of the work we're doing cross party and that Oxford will be the first council that's proactively doing that work. Um, and I'll stop there because I've taken three and a half minutes, which I'm sure is far too long. So back to you, David. Right. I'm sure there's lots of questions after that. So what we'll do in a minute is we'll divide into five breakout rooms. And if there's one without any councillors in, I'll move them around. So there'll be groups of four people, including some councillors. <clears throat> Just before we start, uh, as uh, Chris mentioned it, I'll show you how many more councillors we now have. So if you look on the graph on the right, we've actually had councillors since before 2000. Our first one was a certain Caroline Lucas. Uh, but going from after 2018, we've had a real surge in getting councillors elected in every part of Oxfordshire. And here's a map of the places where people are lucky enough to have a green councillor. So uh, Bride Norton and Shilton, Whitney North, Kidlington East, Kidlington South, six, uh, four different wards in Oxford and a whole swathes of ones in South Oxfordshire. 